Okay, so I've got Tuner Studio open. I wanted to do this video a little bit differently than my others. I just have my screen sharing so you don't have to look at my face. Congratulations, I save you a little bit of pain there. But next up, we have um, kind of the basic settings, and I wanted to run through and kind of show you this. Right now, my car's not running. In fact, I'm not even connected to it at the moment, as you can see. And uh, as I go through and do some tests, I'll connect to it because my car is loud. I don't really want that background noise going on as we're playing around. And I'll show you how some of these settings really impact and uh and kind of change how your car is going to run. Uh, start off with, I'm going to go to settings, go to engine constants, and we're going to take a look through here. One of the very first things to talk about is required fuel. Now, you'll notice right here, mine is at 15.7, and they have a secondary box down here at grayed out that says uh, the same, 15.7. Now, back in the olden days, um, this gray box, which I'm going to focus on first, and I'll talk about the top one here in a second, they really wanted this to be aimed between 11 and 14 milliseconds. Now, you can change this based on how you're doing your injectors in the sense of sequential, uh, simultaneous, alternating, how many squirts per engine cycle. So if I came down here and said one squirt per engine cycle, you'll see you, know, you can't really alternate. But if I did something like simultaneous and then went down to one skirt, I can still get in that same area, but it'd be a little bit different. Uh, I could also go up to say, here's three squirts simultaneous. You'll notice that it drops down to 5.2. It's all just kind of basic math, but uh, I'll come back in here. I'll change it back to where it was. And I'll talk about why that is important here in a second. Required fuel. So required fuel is simply just the basics. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to call out my engine displacement, number of cylinders, my injector flow, and my air fuel ratio. Now, I have smaller injectors, and there's a reason why I have the smaller injectors in there right now. It's just drivability. You can see something if I went in here and I'd say I went to 440 injectors. That's a very common upgrade for people that are doing turboed uh, L28s or Datsuns like I have. Um, a lot of times they'll get these Venom 440s. Okay, I go ahead and type that in there. Notice what it does to my required fuel. More specifically, down here in the milliseconds, where it's got that called out right there. In fact, they even have a little question marks for kind of help there, but uh, it's essentially the base pulse width required to achieve. Okay, That's how it's calculating a lot of different things and what it's figuring out. Now, why this is important. Now, the importance of this is injector time, how long they open, things like that. So if I come down here and say that I need to accomplish all this in one squirt over a rotation. Sorry, I had that kicked over back there. So if I go ahead and call this out like that, I'm saying as the engine rotates one time a full you know, 360 degrees, I'm going to squirt once every injector at the exact same time and it's going to complete the same amount of work. Now, if I come in there and I say, well, I want to change this to the same thing, but I'm going to have it squirt twice during that same rotation, well, I have two injector pulses to do the exact same work. In theory, that would be better. In reality, though, you get some interesting things there. What uh, A couple of things that you have to work over is injector opening time. So uh, a lot of times under your injector characteristics, you have a minimal time required for the pintle to drop back and allow fuel to start to flow. A lot of times it's around 1 millisecond to 1.2 to even less, just depending on the type of injectors and quality of injectors that you're using. So it has to overcome that every single time. Then on top of that, you have to start flowing the fuel. And if you, let's say, one millisecond is just opening a time, and then maybe a fraction of that is going to be allowing fuel to come out, even less than a millisecond, then you're starting to come into really fine-tuning the injector pulses to get everything kind of good to go. Now, that becomes really kind of tricky when, as you're using your engine, your injectors get a little bit fouled after a few thousand miles, things like that. So you can do it this way, but you're going to be constantly battling, cleaning the injectors, getting them flowed, doing things like that. Um, so back when we were doing things, our goal was to go ahead, enter in everything, and we wanted to get that, uh, I had 19-pound injectors, we wanted to get that required fuel 
to anywhere between 11 to 14 is where we found to be really good area to allow a great idle and still great drivability. Now, granted, if you are running massive injectors, you've got a really built engine, you can do other things to get it in that range. You can go to sequential. You can do um, other types of situations where you can go in there and start getting that milliseconds down to where it's at. But if you have an option and you're just set up as batch, um, let's say you have your injector channels and you have a choice to do uh, simultaneous or alternating, go ahead and set it up in such a way that it really tries to get you in that sweet spot. And I'll show why... Um, I'll kind of cut away and I'll show you why now. Uh, so I did a test with this and I had the engine running and first off I went ahead and I said okay here it is with my um, I did alternating two squirts so I had my required fuel around 15.6 okay and uh, I'll pull up a little screenshot here showing that now and it was nice. That's how I run my car normally. You can see the amount of the air fuel ratios and kind of the sweet range. Everything was kind of smooth, worked out well. For the next part, I went ahead and I just changed my squirts per engine cycle and my um, injector staging. So I went to simultaneous and I went ahead and changed that to three. Now notice my required fuel, it goes down to 5.2. So that's quite of a big drop and I wanted it to be a little bit more dra dramatic. Um, and you, of course, you can go to six squirts or whatever it is that you need to do to kind of get that up there and kind of crazy. But what it did, and I'll pull that up here, my air fuel ratio immediately dropped and my idle became a little more unstable. Now, my idle valve tried to recover for this and compensate for it, but it did cause some issues. So be aware of that. That's kind of why I'm advising this. Based on tests, things that I've done in the past, I found the sweet spot. And, uh, and also from others kind of supporting my view as well. I think even the Mega Manual um, back in the old day uh, quoted that as well, kind of trying to get it into that uh, kind of 11 to 14 range. Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but let me know. But that's where I found the great success. It gives me a good idle that doesn't waste a lot of fuel. I get better fuel economy at idle, if that makes sense, kind of better fuel uh, consumption. And the engine doesn't suffer. Now, once you get into high RPMs, whether you're doing simultaneous or alternating or how many squirts, it really doesn't matter as much because you get what we call injector or kind of fuel pooling. Uh, so the injectors fire at the back of the valve for port injection. They basically have a puddle of fuel sitting there. And as soon as the valve opens, it, it atomizes it as it's being flushed in there immediately with all the air. And so that's kind of the trick there. So a lot of times as you're getting up and you're going, um, even at low speeds, that still happens quite well and mid range, especially and higher range is just, you know, it's essentially just in and out as quick as it can, as it goes through. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. If you really want a sequential, well, why do you want sequential? Uh, start looking at your settings. Look at your, you know, milliseconds required for your injectors to get that, uh, you know, that ratio down here, the 14. So just be aware of what you're aiming for. Try and get it to where it's a good drivability and test out your case. And maybe you have an engine that's going to run great with a very low, uh, kind of the millisecond count up here, uh, but let me know. If you're testing this out and you're kind of running into some issues or you find it works better in one way or another, use your data logs to kind of confirm your theory. Um, don't be afraid to try out a few different things as long as you know that you're not going to cause any permanent damage and that it's a very controlled case. So change one aspect of it. Don't change a bunch of things and then compare it together, but change one aspect of it and see what the difference makes. Okay. Uh, a lot of this is kind of called out. You'll notice here um, a lot of different things. Engine type, that's a question that I get every now and then. Odd fire versus even fire. If you were to envision this like a distributor on the car, if you're looking at your distributor, if you even have a distributor, and everything is, all plug wires are kind of evenly spaced around that distributor, you're definitely an even fire. Now, if you have kind of an old Harley, uh, some motorcycles do this, more often than not, you're an odd fire. The odd fire means that the, the uh, rotational degrees between ignition events between cylinders is not equal. 
So if I have a two cylinder, well, I expect that as it rotates, you know, the distance between one is the same as the dis or between one and two is the same as two to one. Uh, that's what it's looking for for even fire. If it's on fire, where hey, you know, one fires and then 90 degrees later, two fires, and then it goes through a whole kind of rotation and then one and two really quickly after that. Well, that's odd fire. Okay. That's very rare, but you'll know it if it's your kind of case. A lot of times, if you've read up about your engines, it'll call it out. Um, all right, so I've kind of rambled a little bit, but I've gone through a lot of information on here. Uh, one of the last things I will call out here is the map sensor or sample method. Always just leave this to cycle average. Um, you'll notice they have instantaneous. That sounds great, but really not something you need to play around with in most cases. Uh, cycle minimum, this is more for one to two cylinder engines. Um, almost everything I've used, I don't think I've ever used anything outside of what would be considered a cycle average situation. And so it just says, hey, the map, if it's getting really fine-tuned map readings, you'll notice that between cylinder fires, there's changes in your map. Okay, And so that's what it's looking for. It's just saying, well, I want to average whatever it is between the fires, and then that's my sample size for what uh, my map level is and what I'm going to be basing my injector load on. Okay. All right. I think that's about enough talking for now. So uh, let me know if there is anything else you want me to dive in. I'm probably just going to start working my way through the settings, uh, just across the top, talk through a lot of things. Kind of the fun one I'm excited for is the idle. So right now I've spent some time on my idle, but I haven't really dialed it in. So I'm hoping to use this as an opportunity as I'm recording it to really dial it in and spend some time there. Uh, let me know if there's anything specific you're looking for. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, do anything like that. Uh, I will read them and I will respond to them. Uh, thanks for your time.